Hello there good people to the internet, DD Devere here with another software tutorial review and today I'm taking a quick look at Shapeworks. This is a 3D sculpting application currently available on Steam. So when you first open the app you'll be met with this interface. So there's the sculpture itself which we'll take a much more in-depth look at shortly. The append texture, we'll talk about that workflow as well as it works in conjunction with some other tools you've got here. So you get a model converter, does exactly what it says on the tin if you have a Model in say OBJ format, you want to change it, click on there, load your model, and then from this drop down list, select DAE, OBJ, STL, PLY, FBX, dot X, 3DS, and then these two file formats I'm not actually familiar with. So it's pretty much got you covered, it's got most of the usual file formats you'll need for 3D work depending on your application. And that will automatically convert it for you. That model optimizer, you Click on that, load in your high res model, and it basically is an automatic decimator. It reduces the poly count to something a bit more manageable. And my experiences with it so far is it works as well as any of these automatic ones. And then finally, you get a help file, and I probably don't have to explain what that does. So let's launch the sculpt application itself, as this is undoubtedly the program most people are interested in, and by far and away its most powerful application. All right, so we're in app, in the sculptor itself. So the, this on your downside here is to do with your brush and your brush settings. These are two further applications that we'll talk about later. And you've got your main things here, just to your subdivision here. You could increase your resolution. You've also got, uh, you can remesh it to quads or to tries, and that slider sets your resolution there. But keep in mind, like other applications, it's a bit like quick remesher. Once you do that, you will lose these subdivisions and they have to resubdivide here. So here's your brush selector. And you can, of course, just use the hotkeys. Q and E is between your simple brush and your transform. And then one through to nine will select, but you will miss a few extra settings. So I'm going to use this to look through them as we here. So we're on our simple brush. Uh, navigation wise, if you click outside your model, you can rotate around it. Tick that, you can pan. So all very simple. Uh, to change your brush size, you hold over the model, hold down C, and scan left or right. Just move your mouse or your stylus left and right to change your brush size. You see there, brush intensity is the same. Just hold X, left and right, change your brush intensity. So your simple brush, deceptively named, because we'll have a bit more of an in-depth look at this later, is your basic clay build-up kind of type jobby. Oh, by the way, if you want to turn the symmetry on and off, you just tick it there as well. And if you invert this brush, oh, of course it does the opposite. So our next brush, this is our displaced brush. This is good for sort of bringing out these kind of spikes and whatnot. As you see there, you can also have it restricted by normals as well as add some warping to it. So that's, uh, that's how you do that one. Now the morph brush, this one's quite interesting. When using this stylus, if I do like little gentle sort of touches on the, on my tablet, see it just makes little gentle maneuvers. But if I then put a lot of pressure on, I can do large scale changes to my geometry. So that's quite, uh, it's quite responsive to the, to the stylus pressure. It's really good the way that works. Obviously, if you are using a mouse, you, you won't have that effect <laughs> for obvious reasons. And the next brush in line, the swell brush. This is obviously just your kind of inflate. So it's more rounded than the, than the simple brush, basically. And of course, if you invert it, it, um, de inflates, I guess is the word. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a word or not. Then we get our smooth brush. Now you can hold, like most of these applications, you can hold a shift to activate your smoothing, but you do get a choice here, as you can see, of having more of a, a relaxed apology rather than hard smoothing. But like most people, I just use the shift hotkey for when I want smoothing done. Then we get our stroke brush. Now this is more like our sort of damn standard style, good for creases and that kind of thing. Much more edging like that sort of type thing. 
And of course, if you invert it, then it's good for adding sort of sharper edges to your model. That's pretty much sort of standard operations. After our stroke brush, we get the enlarge. This is a bit of a bit of a funky brush. It sort of does, depending on the pressure again of your stylus, you can sort of use it as did sort of like a distortion. It does take a little bit of getting use of. It's not one I found a great amount of use for. So sort of things like that. It's a distortion style brush. As is the twirl style brush so you can probably guess what that does you just it just adds twirls to your to your geometry sort of one of those brushes that you know has its places but it's not one you're going to use a great amount and then finally we have our masking so masking you can pretty much guess you mask like that if i added the uh, if i could if under here you can invert it so we have that now if i activated my transform tool move that back to start working on some eyes or something you can also if I switch back to the mask then I can just clear it or invert it so all in all as far as the, the basic tools goes it's got a well thought out thought out selection and its interface is simple enough let's quickly turn back to the deceptively named simple brush we come under the brush panel here you know if you have al alphas you want to sculpt with you can load them there but we also get an alpha database it's a bit strange the way this works if i click on the alpha database i'll try that again this this isn't the program this is my this is my stylus going a bit funky needs a new nib but now that i need them can i find the pack of them no of course i can't so here we have a as you can see there's quite a large database here of various alphas you get to, to to sculpt with obviously depending on your brush strength and the resolution of your model how effective it'll be if we pick something like like that one now you might start sculpting and think oh not a lot happening at the moment well, that's because you have to come back here after you've selected now select the load alpha and you see here we've got the well, for some reason, my brush has gone missing. My <laughs> that might be my recording software. You need to select an image file, any sort of image file, doesn't matter. So I'll select that then, that kitten. Thumbs up if you like kittens. Hit enter. Don't know why it's now doing this. This is. Let's try again. Load alpha. Ah, it's back again. Open. And you'll get this little message to load from the data database. Just hit OK. So let's hit OK. Now, as you see there, it's starting to get a wrinkled sort of effect going on. So it's now sculpting with the alpha. But again, your, your brush intensity and the resolution of your model will how if, make how effective this is. You can also use the hold at point, which is basically... Let me just use the mouse for clicking things is basically a stamp brush so you can add details that way so there's a lot to like here in that respect you've also got a few more things so now we've covered the, the basics of the sculpting and your subdivision you also have kit bashing oh you can also uh if you don't want to necessarily sculpt on a cube you do have these ones here these primitives there you've also got user content you can download user-made content but it's a bit empty at the moment we also have the kit bashing side. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly, before I do the kit bashing, we'll talk about these two apps here, actually. So generate UVs. This works in conjunction with the append texture we looked at that's in the main splash menu and your model decimator. You click on that. It brings this little pop-up. You pick your map size. You drag and drop the model that you use the decimator on into here and then hit compute and it'll automatically apply UVs. Then it will generate a texture as well at the same time, which then use that append texture to select your model and the UV map and tie them together. And then you can texture it in whatever program you want to use. And then there's the slicer. This one's a bit, yeah, 
it, maybe it's better with you an actual chunkier model. See if I move things around and change my slice size. And let's say there, you sort of click outside and across, and it sort of cuts through the through the geometry that way. I suppose you export it out, and you can export it in for further working on inside this inside of Shapeworks itself. It's not something I've ever found in use for myself, but it's there. Same with the generate reviews. As I say, I generate UVs. I use 3D Coat for retopology and UVs. So it's not something I've used. But if you've got nothing else, then at least the program's got you covered. Then you've got obviously your poly count. Oh, yeah, an F. If I didn't mention it, F is to show your wireframe. And then if you want to know what the shortcuts are, eh, that's there for that. So we've also got kit bashing. So let's go to. Not something I use a lot, so a uh, new scene, clear this. And I, under that, you come to the model database this time around, select the database. So you get a few more different things you can add in to start sculpting on. Down here is the, uh, I'll double click one of those to select it. Then I'll come along and add to workspace. And boom, you've got these basic models, and it's like most kit bashing things. I'll pick up my mouse for this. You sort of drag around and, you know, bring them together to make a model of your own. And you can export that and then bring it back in for, if I was to shift click those two together and merge models. I now have a whole model. And you, again, kit bashing is not something, as I say, it's not something I use. You've got quite a few, as you see there, model databases. There's a fair decent amount of different lightweight something and unisex model, ship gun, gun kit. So if you need that sort of thing, it's, it's there. But as far as the basic sculpting goes, it's so. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it's a very good. It's got a really nice. I just add a uh, let's add a cylinder or something. The actual feel of the brushes itself in the say the simple brush. Oops, I'm still on that. I just take that off again. Yeah, I'm just going to use the <laughs> the mouse. Really do need to get this stylus sorted out. It's got a really lovely feel to the sculpt in this program. The good thing is it's it's only twenty five pounds or just under, so it's not expensive. Uh, it's got the extra applications you need, but the main the main thing is undoubtedly this sculpting. As far as it goes, and the good thing is if you only if you don't have a stylus, it actually works pretty well with a mouse. Because when I first bought it, uh, the developer hadn't actually added the stylus support into it. He was working on that. That came as an update, so I had to use the mouse to begin off with, and it was surprisingly good for a sculpting app. Although, of course, if you do intend sculpting to become a a large part of your workflow, you really really do want to get yourself a a stylus, even a cheap one, is better than having nothing at all. But in the grand scheme of things, yeah, this is a this is quite a interesting little tool. It's easy enough to get the grip, the hang of. It's got all the sort of tools you'd need. You've got your masking. Uh, one strange thing that caught me a bit by surprise was when you come here, file. You might notice there's a oh, there's no save. It doesn't have its own file format. You just export your OBJ you're working on and then bring it back in. Now, you might think, oh, well, what if I've got a load of masking down like this and I really need to keep this masking? Well, that was a strange thing. I exported one out with some masking on it, brought it back in, and it, it remembered the masking. Yet when I opened up the OBJ in the, in the different programs, there, there was no sign of it, but the program itself does remember, it does respect your marking, your, your masking. So it's not a big issue if you, it's a strange way of working, not having the same format. It's different for sure, but it's not a, it's, it does, it's not a problem. And that did, did kind of catch me by surprise when I first went to first save a project. <laughs> so anyway, I think we'll conclude our dealings here. All in all, a very well sorted, uh, very affordable 3D sculpting app. Obviously, you know, and it doesn't come with a price tag of, of a Z brush, which is like, what's that now? now nearly a thousand pounds or something these days. As good as it is, but this is a, if you're after a lightweight, easy to grasp sculpting app, this is definitely good. So really, in a way, is, is, I've had the odd occasional 
issue with the interface uh, has been a main issue. I've not had it crash yet. It's been relatively stable. That's been good. It would just be nice if things like the, if it would be if you could just click the load alpha and pick an alpha. So if I want to clear it now, I have to, where, where was the, uh, I'm not on the wrong brush. That's why I didn't see it. Yeah, it would be nice if you could just quickly, boom, you know, pick an alpha straight off from the, from the list and then just add it to the program. That would be really nice. Uh, and it would be nice if you're not notice there's no layer support. This is kind of like a, a fast, clear sculpting app, but it would be nice if they could bring layers into the program somehow. I think that would be definitely be good. But outside of that, um, yeah, it's, it's all been relatively minor. As I said, that issue earlier on, for some reason, my mouse got missing, but that could have been my, that could have been my, that recording software causing issues with that there. You can never quite tell. But stability has been good. Tools are great. The, the, the feel of this is, is really nice, really sort of quite reactive. In fact, if anything, I actually prefer the feel of the sculpt brushes in this to 3D coat, which I find the brushes in 3D coat to be a bit meh, a bit too on off. These just feel just, just sort of like nice and nice and yeah, sort of feels like you are sort of as close as you can get to sculpting in clay with out sculpting in clay, obviously. So all in all, I think, yeah, if you're after this sort of thing, this is definitely one for, especially for £25, that you should definitely uh, get on your radar. It's well worth a little pick up and play. So anyway, all, thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'm hoping you found this uh, useful or educational in some way. And as ever, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, to let me know you're alive and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.